Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen and this is Medicine Walk. And for those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, this is Healing House Radio. So I hope everyone had a wonderful week. And well, and as always, here's <laughs> my co-host Luna. She just loves to be on the camera, or at least mess with me while I'm on it. So anyway, uh for those of you who are watching the premiere of this episode, I am in the chat room live. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please log in and you can ask them. And for those of you who are listening on Blog Talk Radio, then uh, you can either go to the YouTube page that's shown in the link, or you can leave any questions or comments in the comments section and I will respond to them. So. This has been a very active and emotional week as this is election week. And, you know, I'm not getting into the kettle of badgers that would mean making any sort of political statement. So I will simply leave it at whatever it is that you choose, whatever it is that you believe in, support it and take action um, as a black female, I know that I didn't always have the right to vote. And so, you know, I mean, as a woman, it wasn't until 1920. So it's important to act. It's important to get involved. It's important to be a part of the process. So political moment over. And it is still a very dynamic time energetically and emotionally. So this might be a really, really hard time for empaths. And the thing is, is that events like this can trigger a lot of people on a very, very primal level. And the idea that, you know, we really get behind our beliefs and sometimes when those are challenged or things don't go the way we want or we feel that somebody else is challenging what we believe there is an instinct to you know kind of you know bristle up and hey this is this is my point and this is what i want to say and you know and you need to understand that you're wrong and there's a lot of that going around there is a lot of projection, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of defensiveness. And for an empath, it's like trying to tiptoe through a minefield because it is very, very difficult not to get sucked into these strong and very intense emotions. And when you add on top of it that, you know, there's a lot of worries about health and the coronavirus and so you're dealing with a tremendously unsure time and as I said this can be a very very challenging time for empaths so we're going to talk a little bit about that and how this can be managed what are some tools that you can use to be able to navigate that minefield a little bit easier and to remain grounded so uh, recommendation number one turn off the TV, <laughs> turn off the news, don't look it up on cable, take a week off Twitter and just kind of isolate yourself for a time. And it could, even if it's just for a couple of days, to take a break from the intensity of what's going on around you. Because the thing is, picking up emotions isn't just about, um, it's not just about the people we're around. Remember, as an empath, you resonate. You can resonate with frequencies. And what's coming across from the television, all of that is energy. All of that, you know, if, if you're watching the television and there's something, you know, going on and there's somebody who's talking, you know, really from their heart or someone who's very upset or very angry or very racist or very opinionated or, or whatever, you will pick that up. You will pick up that aggravation and you will resonate with it unless you choose not to. So it's not just about being who you're around. It's about what you're allowing yourself to be exposed to. And it's important to be able to block that off because what happens is once you start down that slippery slope of 
seeing and experiencing the anger and frustration of others, it's going to trigger inside of you. I mean, you can't help but feel anxious about the things that are going on in the world. And that's you. That's that's your emotions. That's your your space that you're in. And it's important to be able to separate you from what's around you. There was this awesome uh, saying that was that I, I saw on, uh, I think it was on Twitter. And so I shared it. So if, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, go and check. And I really loved it. It was how um, it's not the water outside the ship that makes it sink. It's when the water outside gets inside. And so the point to it was, you know, don't allow what's around you to soak in and make you sink. So, I mean, it's, it's paraphrasing. And, and like I said, you can go to the Twitter page and the links in the description and check it out. It's a wonderful saying, but really is, you know, I mean, that's almost the whole idea of managing empathy is that idea that you can be able to decide not to let that water in, not to let yourself get sunk. And as I said, first and foremost, shut it out. Just don't engage. If somebody wants to talk politics with you, walk away. Say you're not talking about that right now. Engage in things that make you happy. Engage in things that maybe there's a book you've been really, really wanting to get around to reading. Or maybe there's a TV show that you enjoy that, you know, you've been meaning to binge watch. Or maybe you've been planning on starting, you know, working with watercolor paints or building a model or working on a puzzle. Whatever those things are that are better than what's coming in and what's, you know, that influence that's coming in at you, decide what influences are going to come in and make them good ones. Make them positive ones because it's it's important for everybody to take a, a break from the information. It's especially important for empaths. You need to create those spaces where you're not going to be just constantly inundated with negativity and fear and anger. So, you know, that's just step one. Step two, as we talked about finding those grounding points for you, um, do you ground to stones? Do you ground to water? Do you ground to air? Uh, do you ground to fire? And it's good that once you decide what it is or what environment or what element allows you to ground best, surround yourself with it. If you, you know, if you ground to earth and earth aspects, then I would say this is a wonderful time to go to your local plant nursery and get yourself a whole bunch of plants and have them inside the house, have them around you. Create that peaceful sort of space. Maybe there are certain sounds you ground to. Wonderful time to either download them or, or get the uh, CDs and just enjoy it. Have your house constantly filled with that sound, with that music, rather than turning the TV on and listening to, you know, people yelling at each other. It's good to figure it out. If it's, you know, if it's candles, get yourself a bunch of candles. And if it's, you know, I mean, you know, always safety first. And you can get the, the candles that uh, use batteries, but they flicker. So even if you're using that, you can still imagine uh, that it is the fire or, you know, sounds like a great time of year to, you know, if you have a fireplace to use it. If you have, I mean, I've got a um, gas fireplace and that's, it heats my cabin, but it also provides me with kind of where I can just sit and look into the flames. Um, if it's water, get yourself to the beach, get yourself to a lake, go fishing. Maybe you've always wanted to go fishing. Whatever it is that allows you to bring everything just kind of into a nice quiet spot and to hold it there, do that. 
So if you didn't uh, watch the episode where we talked about that, you can go back and, you know, watch some of the earlier episodes because we've mentioned it a few times that you need to find what is your source for grounding. What is your space for grounding? So, um, you know, and it's a wonderful time for you to research that if nothing else, as long as you're not, you know, watching TV or, or listening to things that make you upset. Now, it's not like you're never going to go back to it. We all have to come back into the world. The eye of the storm is temporary. The That space is not meant to last. It's meant to give us a break. So if you want to take one day, three days, a week, don't worry. The rest of the world will still be waiting there when you get back. But it just allows you to have a time of separation. Because as we've talked about before, it's really important to be able to separate. It's not always the best thing to be around people. And sometimes what you need most is to be alone. So don't feel that you have to deal with people. Don't feel that you have to engage. If somebody wants to engage you in a conversation you don't want to have, and it's always interesting because I find that when people really are very insistent about engaging into a conversation, a lot of times it's it's that they're not very settled in it. They're not very secure. They're not very, you know, convinced. So they have to go out of their way to convince somebody else because then it validates them. And if you can, you know, turn on the empathy just a little bit, you can actually practice. Feel what people are feeling when they're in these intense conversations, most of the time, what you're going to feel is insecurity. We are communal creatures and we are validated by having others agree with us. So if somebody feels the need to have you agree with them, then they're not very confident in their, in their own position. But I mean, that's, their issue, that's their stuff to cover, that's their stuff to deal with, that does not belong to you, not your circus, not your monkeys. So find what it is that gives you peace, indulge in that, escape to that just for a little while, so that when you come back, you come back from a place of groundedness. Because then as you walk in the world, as you, you know, watch the news, as you, you know, experience conversations, you can always have that part of your mind in that space. You know, if, if it's stones, you always keep a stone with you. And if things start firing up, you know, you just take it and you put it in your hand and then you just go into that space. If it's water, you can carry around a bottle of water. And uh, one of the things, there was uh, some work done by Dr. Emoto, and it had to do with um, water freezing. And if you said something loving to the water or, you know, wrote something loving on the water container, it would freeze in these beautiful shapes. And if you said something negative or angry, then they would freeze in these really horrible shapes. So... Um, yeah, uh, you can check that out, uh, Dr. Emoto. And uh, I will find the, I can't remember the name of the book right off the bat, but I'll put it in the description because it is a very interesting book. It's a very interesting study that was done. But the idea is that what water is exposed to will change its nature, either towards, you know, balance or towards discord. So we are 70% water, keep in mind. And what we experience, what is said to us, or you know, what we have directed to us, or even what we're in the field of can have that effect. So if you're gonna drink water, what you can do is you can take a container and put a smiley face on it and put your water in that, you know, and every day, or write love on, on your water container. And then you can be able to incorporate that energy into the water you drink. So if you ground to water and things are getting a little bit stressful for you, drink water. And as you swallow it, just slowly drink it, you know, in little sips and, uh, and feel that becoming a part of you. And then you'll be able to match that. 
if it's at work, try getting a little small plant and putting it on your desk and having that influence there. You can use statues. Some people uh, will use statues of, of different images that help them feel good. So surround yourself with the things that allow you to find balance, that allow you to detach. Because this really is a time where it's important to be able to detach. It's important to be able to separate from what it is that is causing a disruption in your energetic field. You're going to resonate because that is your nature. How much you resonate is up to you. If you can reach the point where you can turn it off, and that's ultimately the practice is to be able to turn it on and off and utilize empathy at need, then you can be able to um, be able to more dis be more discerning in how much you want to invest. You know, first the question is, do I need empathy right now? If you're surrounded by people who are arguing politics, I guarantee you, you do not need your empathy on at that moment. You probably just need a good pair of earplugs and something pleasant to listen to. If you are, you know, say it's a situation where maybe you want your empathy on a little bit, why you would, I don't know, but if you choose to have empathy on, you know, maybe you're concerned about the person who's talking. And sometimes if that person, because a lot of times, like I said, you know, the, if somebody is argumentative, often it's coming from a place of not feeling safe. So if you really want to work with that person and, you know, they, are going through something and, you know, they're kind of masking it by wanting to argue politics. And that sometimes happens. And the times that I encounter it, I usually find that it is a wonderful opportunity that if somebody is really kind of going off, it's like, wow, you know, that's really intense. Um, are you okay? And turn the conversation around and you can kind of help by matching them you know, because a lot of times if, you know, it's like, wow, you know, you're, you are you all right? Are you okay? You know, you seem tired or this is really intense for you. Why is this so intense for you? And often something else has upset someone or they're afraid about something else. And in that case, yes, you can utilize empathy to be able to create a connection to get past their mask of, you know, righteous indignation to where it is that they're really either hurting inside or they're concerned or they're afraid or the process has triggered a memory that's unpleasant or they're, you know, for whatever reason. If it's a situation where you think that the argumentative nature is simply trying to hide a vulnerability and you want to help that person be able to find balance again, where maybe they don't have to be quite so intense then you can utilize, you know, just a little bit of empathy and hear what they have to say and, you know, just recognize that something may be wrong. Ask them if they're okay. You know, note that they really, really seem upset. And are they sure that there isn't something else maybe that they'd like to talk about? I've done this many, many times and it can immediately diffuse the person from what it is that they're projecting to where they feel safe enough to maybe talk about, well, it actually has been a really bad week. And then you can get into the other discussion. So whether or not you want to engage is up to you. And if you're spoiling for a fight, go for it. Just knock yourself out. And as an empath, you do have a responsibility to be able to be in balance with your own energy. And it doesn't help you and it doesn't help anyone else to allow yourself to be kind of knocked about by the stuff going on. This is especially a time for empaths to practice self-care, to isolate when they need to, 
just to, you know, find that peaceful, quiet place to give yourself permission to not discuss things that you don't want to discuss. You don't have to justify it. You can just say, you know what, this doesn't make me feel good. You know, that you can indulge in the things that you want to indulge in. Like I said, you know, pick up a good book, turn the TV off for a while, you know, turn, don't check the internet headlines, you know, do what you need to do and then just separate and be around people who like to laugh and don't like to discuss politics. You know, it's, it's a challenging time. And honestly, it's not going to get a whole lot better from here on to, you know, pretty much the end of the year. Either way, there are going to be people who are upset. So your job is to be able to find a way to manage that that allows you to be able to stay in balance. And the best way to do that is to decide how do you keep your space clear? Now, in last year, when we did the classes, um, I did one on uh, one month we devoted to clear, clearing spaces and working with sacred spaces. So I would say go back into those videos and you can check and they're all on the playlist. So you can be able to take a look at things if you need to really clear your space if you're feeling that off because see that's the thing you are going to feel the physical effects of the energy around you and the more intense those energies are the more intense that physical reaction is going to be so you need to make sure that you're taking good care of yourself that you're eating well that you're sleeping as much as you can sleep because that's the first thing to get affected is suddenly we're not sleeping so great so make sure that you are taking care of your physical needs because your body is going to react. And if you do have any type of illness or, or whatever, this is going to not be very helpful for you. So do your best to, you know, check in with yourself, check in with your body. If you're not sure as to whether or not you should be involved in a conversation, how do you physically feel? How is that energy resonating in your physical self? If you're not feeling well, if you start to get a headache, if you, you know, your stomach feels a little bit upset, that is the energy in your body responding to it saying, yeah, we need to go be somewhere else right now. We need to be looking at something else. We need to be engaging in things that have us feel better because it's, it's going to be, this isn't going to be a sprint. It's going to be a marathon. And the more you choose to take care of yourself, the more you choose to utilize your empathy as needed and shutting it off when you don't need it. And remember, in order to shut it off, um, go to your grounding source, go to that place of stillness, because once you get used to being into that place of stillness, the empathy will not engage. It's just you by yourself autonomous and whole. So these are things you can practice. If you're not sure how to do this, if you have other questions, please put them in the comments or um, you can contact me. Uh, there's contacts in the links. You can contact me through Twitter. You can contact me through the Facebook page, uh, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. Uh, that's my Facebook group. And you can contact me through that or, um, you know, just you can message me and uh, through Twitter. So you can um, send me a DM and I will do my best to help you in your particular situation. So make sure you are taking very good care of yourself. This is going to be through the rest of the year. Take breaks. Get out of the political intensity. You need to do that every once in a while to be able to find balance with yourself. And quite honestly, you know, we, we don't need to be burying ourselves in opposing opinions of others because that's just painful for an empath. Listen to your body. And oh, by the way, it's excellent to listen to your body just in case you're coming down with something. Um, we're dealing with uh, the coronavirus. And 
you know, there's a lot of folks who are very scared about that. So stay balanced, take care of yourself, pay attention to what your body is saying, because that is one of the best ways to avoid, you know, creating a, a opportunity for something to come in because your body is worn down by the energetic fields that you've been in. If you're feeling tired, there's a good chance it's because you're not separating yourself from the energy around you. Once you do that, you tend to sleep a little bit better. Oh, and always, always, always wash your hands every time, you know, and, and don't touch your face. So, I mean, I know I've been, you know, brushing my hair and everything like that, but, you know, do your best not to do that and take care of yourself, appreciate yourself, honor yourself and get out of the crazy every once in a while. Find that quiet place, surround yourself with what allows you to ground and ride out the storm. You don't have to play in that playground. You know, do your, do your duty as you feel that you want to, your level of involvement, whether it's, you know, by voting or whether it's, you know, becoming more active. But if you're going to become active in supporting something, that's wonderful. That's fine. That's great. Just pace yourself. You are more vulnerable to being overwhelmed and becoming exhausted because of the nature of your ability to resonate with what's around you. So don't get caught up in things. Allow everything to flow. You know, the, the universe flows, life flows, and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So do what you can where you feel you need to but then make sure you're taking a lot of time to rest and you're nourishing your body and you're taking care of yourself and you're spending enough time on your own, just relaxing. So, you know, be aware, listen to your body. And if you're going to, you know, deal with the energies around you, then create at least some little, you know, oasis points in that desert for you so that you can rest and rejuvenate. So thank you for joining me. And uh, next week we'll be carrying another topic. So I look forward to this. I, I really enjoy doing these and we're up to, I believe 86 subscribers. So we're looking for 14 more. So if you like what uh, which I've shared with you, then please like the video and you can subscribe and, oh, make sure you hit the little bell so that you receive notifications and, um, you can share the video. Also, for those of you who are listening in on blog talk radio, I invite you to come over and take, check out the videos. So thank you for joining me. And as always, I wish you balance. I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you and take care. <laughs>